All right, everybody, welcome back to the Tomahawk. We got a special show today. It's our first interview. We've got Jay Khan on the show. Got Matt and Justin as always, and uh, we're gonna talk some hockey. Jake, how you doing, man? Doing great, boys. Glad to be glad to be on with you. Excited to to talk a little hockey and uh, break it down with the Chicago Blackhawks. Maybe we could look ahead to the playoffs a little bit as well. So I uh, hope all three of you boys are doing well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if the Hawks were in playoff contention, we'd be doing much better. You know, a little return to the glory days, but apparently that's not in the cards this year. So uh, the, the Hawks have been somewhat of a mixed bag this year. People don't know, or at least we don't know who they are as an identity. They were supposed to come in as a as a um, as a team that was rebuilding. They're supposed to be in the drudges of the of the central division. Actually, a lot of people weren't think the central division was going to be much and they turned into be Titans. Uh, and everybody is kind of fighting for their lives a bit. And, but the Hawks uh, sur- surprised a lot of people at the beginning. There was some, uh, well, we, we believe some, not goal, some goalie controversy because originally we believe that Delia and Subban were supposed to be the initial, initial grouping. Lankinen came in and he completely threw that plan to the, uh, to the side, and we've had some guys that have come up in the, like Brandon Hagel, uh, Pius Suter, who needs some, um, who you know obviously needs a little bit of seasoning and some disappointment. Well, I'll name namely, I would say Zadorov and uh, or Zadorov, sorry guys, <laughs> and um, and and Boquist. What are you know your personal feelings, or what have you seen from the Hawks this year, uh, kind of from the outside and looking in? Yeah, I think if you look at it from after that those first three weeks of the season, it's maybe a bit disappointing because you got a little bit excited and there were some great stories. Not to say there still isn't some great stories to take away from the season for the Blackhawks, but I think you thought, okay, maybe the maybe the fourth spot, the playoff spot is there up for grabs. And even at that point, Florida wasn't really going yet. So there was maybe a couple spots that you thought you could get most of us were were putting in ink that it was going to be Carolina and Tampa Bay locking down at least two of those spots. So I think it's a bit disappointing the way that the the second half of the season went. But ultimately, I think he could take away a lot of positives. And you know, you mentioned it there, Michael, about the the Titans in this division, and they really are Titans. I mean, we did power rankings on our show recently, and we had three of these teams in the top five. Uh, I mean, I'm still maybe unsure about Florida long-term. Maybe they're just having a good season. But to me, Carolina and Tampa Bay are two of the best teams in the entire league. I had Carolina at one in my power rankings. I think that highly of them. So you're going up against these teams on a nightly basis. I, I think that's a tough measuring stick for a team like Chicago that's trying to build this thing back up. So I don't know if you want to read too much into it. And I, I think it's good experience for some of these younger guys. And you can maybe take away the fact that you found a goaltender to get excited about, right? You mentioned and uh, Delia and Subban being the combo going into this season, the emergence of Kevin Lankinen, if he continues to get better, maybe you found your number one goaltender of the future or at least somebody that could be a part of a tandem. So there's some positives to take out of this season, but I would have liked to see the the good vibes continue like we saw the first couple of weeks because it was a lot of fun that start of the start of the year. I'm sure you guys were loving it. Oh, oh we yeah. were, it man. We were. It was, yeah. we, you know, we think that a lot of the young guys, I mean, I think they have seven or eight rookies who have scored their first goal in the NHL this year and I, I think as the season uh, went on I think that they might have gotten a little burned out I mean this is the first time a lot of these guys have played this much hockey uh, before normally you know maybe they play on a Saturday or so but now they're playing two or three yeah, games college. a week and uh, especially with some some of the schedules changing like they had to reschedule a Carolina game before and uh, I think that actually happened to Lincoln in as well you know he was he was playing quite a bit and I think he might have gotten burned out what do you where do you see the uh, Lincoln in in you know comparing to comparative to other goalies in the NHL? Yeah, it, it's tough to gauge, right? Because we have such a small sample size on Lankinen. And when you really look at it, and we just talked about how difficult a, a few of these teams are in this division, I don't know how much I want to read into games against Tampa Bay and, and Carolina and some of these top teams, although it's good experience for him, I think, moving forward. And maybe once he gets to lesser competition, it'll feel feel <laughs> easier playing against those teams. Yeah. He doesn't have to go up against these beasts uh, in this division. Yeah. Just twice. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the numbers faded. If you look at the numbers right now compared to what it was at the start of the season, uh, they dipped They dipped quite a bit because he was putting up some crazy numbers at the start of the year. And I don't know if any of us, you know, even the biggest Blackhawks fans like you guys expected those numbers to, to, 
to keep up for the entire year. So they dipped down. I, I still think overall it's been a great year for him. And if you're looking at it, you're trying to compare him with other goaltenders around the NHL. I'm not ready to lock him in as a legit number one goaltender in the league right now. But if he goes out, has another good season next year, and he's working on a really, really cheap deal, I think the Blackhawks have no problem bringing him back and, and giving him some starts. Then I, then I think maybe you got something there. So I, I still need to see it for another year with him, but it's very promising what we saw for the most part this year. Do you think we need an experienced backup, Jake? Yes, I do. I, I think that that would help a lot because it would just stabilize things a little bit, right? To have that older veteran uh, to go back to. And there's plenty of them out there. I mean, it's not hard to find yeah. sort of that older veteran goaltender that you can sign for a million bucks, a million and a half, just throw on your roster. I think it's good to have it. There's a lot of inexperience between the pipes right now for, for the Blackhawks. We just talked about Lankinen that emerged this year. Malcolm Subban's another sort of unproven goaltender. He's had a bit yeah. more time in the NHL than Lankinen. And, and Colin Delia was somebody that was kind of a minor leaguer right so yeah. uh, there's just not a lot of stability there in terms of that veteran goaltender and I would love to see somebody you know like a Corey Crawford who was there for so long um, obviously not somebody of that ability Corey Crawford one of the better goaltenders of his time uh, but somebody like that a veteran that's maybe towards the end of their career to come in and, and stabilize things I think that would be good for the Hawks I agree <laughs> um Jake, what what do you see like their defensive core, right? Like so Duncan Keith's getting older, he's not getting any younger. Connor Murphy, I'm still hit or miss on. Kelvin DeHaan, I know I keep reading that the Kraken might take him in the expansion draft. Like yeah. what would you ideally if if you were running the defense, what would you like to see them do going forward? Like do we keep pushing Ian Mitchell and Wyatt Kalinuk, who they just picked up this year, and Riley Stillman, I know they gave an extension to. Like what would you like to see in terms of their defense? How could they improve that? Well, yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great question. I think it's key too because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of fun forwards up front. I think there's some talent up front for Chicago to get excited about. We talked about Lankinen and the possibility of there being something there. I look at the blue line and it's extremely thin. I mean, it's no surprise that they're giving up a bunch of high danger chances to these top teams. I would stress patience with the blue line. I think that's the word I would use the most. And you mentioned a guy like Ian Mitchell who's still very young, uh, Adam Boquist who's still extremely young as well. These guys need time to develop. I mean, it's not easy. Sure. to step into the league and, and play on the blue line and play against these veteran players that have been doing it for so, so long. I, I think it's the most difficult position to step into the league. You know, even if you're a first overall pick, like a guy like Rasmus Dahlin in Buffalo, he's needed a couple years to kind of really find himself. And, and even now, he's still maybe not where he needs to be. So I think when you're looking at young defensemen, it's just good to get them the experience, continue to stay patient with them. I would maybe like to see them shore up the blue line a bit next year, protect these kids maybe a bit more by bringing in some veterans. Veterans. I, I understand Duncan Keith back there, and he's kind of the ultimate veteran right now. Yeah. Uh, but his plays obviously deteriorated, yeah. d deteriorated a little bit uh, in recent years. So I'd maybe like to see a couple more of those veteran guys back there next season, and and possibly that's something that they could address in the off season. But as for the young guys, I think that's the future, and you just want to stay patient and, and get these guys as many important minutes as possible. For sure. Okay. Obviously, development is is key, and one of the things with developing a players is is communication and i think we're at a time right now where we have some coaches that are really old school and believe in these old school tactics and we have some other coaches that are more new school and they treat the players much differently you know we're looking at a time now where back in the day the players they would do their interview they would go out and drink beer have a great yeah. time who knows <laughs> what they did you know nowadays everybody is you know they have their cell phones out and camera and, ready. Yep. Yeah, and and they they want to get into and talk about issues that are important to them, and 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 coaches need to figure out a way to communicate with them. Do you think that the head coach now plays more of a role in communicating with young players, making them feel heard, and and in in doing that, bringing bring their development to a higher level than say some other coaches? Yeah, well, I do think the mental part of the game is so key as well, right? And I don't know if that necessarily falls on the coach, but it can fall on the coach. I mean, the coach can take that into his own hands or other coaches on the team can really help players through that because – 
you know, it's not easy learning how to be a professional. And especially as a young player in this league, there's a lot of distractions out there, especially nowadays, even more so uh, than maybe 10, 15 years ago. So there's a lot going on for some of these kids. You get a lot of money early and, uh, you know, it can be difficult to sort of handle it. So I think the mental side of the game is really, really key. And like I said, just sort of learning to just be a professional in the league and show up every single night and every single day at practice and, and be at your best. So, yeah, I do think that that's something that can certainly fall on, on the coach. Uh, tough to really quantify and, and put into words, but I, I do think that that's something that's that's extremely important this day and age in the NHL. Hmm. Go ahead, Matt. Um, well, I had a question about, um, gee, it was just on my tongue and I just couldn't you were, say it. I know uh, you were talking about, about the, being the GM, right, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. I guess I can go there. I'll say Stan Bowman gets fired today <laughs> and Jay Khan gets hired. You get the call. Oh. Who are we keeping? Right. Who are we unloading? Who are we drafting? Like what types of players? Cause I think Bowman, I, I just, we were talking in our last podcast he doesn't really keep too many of his first round picks. I think we only yeah. have two. So he doesn't <laughs> seem to have like a good plan with these guys. It I seems think it's like Doc and Boquist are the only two that are on the roster, right? And I have a feeling Boquist won't last long. I just feel like that he's been given a lot of chances, but like you said, he's young and you got to protect him and stuff. But I, I just don't see him fitting in on this team. Well, for, first of all, if I'm taking over for Stan, how much am I getting paid here? We got to talk dollars. dollars <laughs> you're getting, I, you're well, getting this. Well, it's Chicago. You're yeah. going to get a five year deal, and then you're going to fire. The, you're going to get fired after a year. All the Giordanos you can eat. You yeah, know. yeah. Perfect. And and, well, if, and if you do bad, they'll they'll promote you to president probably. Yeah. Okay. Great. This, yeah. this sounds like a great job for me. I'm Let's go. This role. Yeah. And I get paid in American money too. That's yeah. like a <laughs> hundred times money up, money up here. But no, to to answer your question, I think it's a it's a really intriguing roster for, for a few different reasons. And, you know, we kind of went over the blue line, some of the youth back there. Uh, there are some exciting forwards. I, I think that we can look forward to you guys mentioned Kirby doc. And I don't think we've really got to see the best of him this year. He unfortunately got hurt at the world juniors yeah. playing for my, uh, my team Canada. And I was really sad to see that because I was very excited to watch him, you know, start the season with Chicago and, and really be a part of that thing. So he gets off to the late start. I think you can almost draw a line through the season for a guy like Kirby Doc, but I'm really excited about his future. I think he's somebody that you can maybe I, maybe not build around as a focal point, but be a really nice piece uh, amongst an, a few other big pieces for Chicago to really turn this thing around. I, you know, I'm really just intrigued about some of the veterans on this team and, and what to do you know, with a guy like Duncan Keith on the back end, who's still got a, a couple more years left on his deal. Uh, and even Patrick Kane. I mean, to, Patrick Kane's one of the best hockey players in the world he's probably the best american born player ever you know does, yep. does he stick around for this how do you, do you figure something out there like have you guys ever really thought about that and the, and the fact that maybe um you know obviously he's a great player no one's disputing his talent but if you wanted to ever move him and get some sort of big package back uh that could be a, a something that, that really does well for chicago in the future i know it's, it's probably crazy to say in chicago uh, <laughs> yeah, because the city is, would riot <laughs> yeah no absolutely and it would be weird yeah. to see him wear any other jersey other than a, It'd be a buffalo and, jersey yeah well oh, there you go yeah. there, there you go no, I, I wouldn't, wish that, that, I wouldn't wish that on anybody at that yeah. point knows, they would, at that point if, if his if he had like 20 points for the year then it would be for sure that buffalo is a curse to players and nobody should ever sign there again <laughs> so, so if i so if i if i'm the the gm and i trade patrick kane am i getting run out of town is that is that what's happening uh, <laughs> you better bring something good back <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, with the expansion draft coming up, Jake, like who, if, if not, not to ask another GM question, but if you're Ron yeah. Francis up in Seattle, you get to Chicago in the expansion draft. Is there anybody in particular that you would kind of stand out? Obviously I know there's tons of stipulations with who's protected and who's not, but yeah. is there any, any diamonds in the rough that you think Seattle might take? I mean, we've Dylan heard Strong, rumors. Please. We've heard, <laughs> Matt is, Matt is all on board with the, please get rid of Dylan Strom. I think his mind is fired the other night. So, um, he, he, I'm done. He but sounds like he'll, dri he'll drive him to Seattle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll, 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 I just I mean, pretty who, much came back from there. <laughs> who, who do you, who could you realistically see? Um, who do you think Seattle might take in a in a perfect situation? I mean, could they go for somebody like uh, Strom? Or I mean, I know you know there's some 
Dahan is the one that keeps getting rumored. Could they yeah. go, go with someone else? I mean, what do you think, um, big picture, who do you think they might lose in the expansion draft this year? Yeah, well, I do think the Blackhawks compared to maybe some other teams around the league are in a pretty good spot for the expansion draft. I don't think they're going to lose a huge piece. Uh, and, sure. you know, we, we saw in the last expansion draft for Vegas, there was a couple teams that just had such a tough spot, right? Like you knew yeah. you were going to lose a really good defenseman. You knew you were going to lose a really good forward. And Vegas t- obviously played it really well. And we they saw the instant it. success. Yeah, yeah. They, they really killed it. And I, yeah. I wasn't expecting it at all. I, I had no expectations mm-hmm. for them going into that year. And it really was quite the story. I, I don't expect the same thing to happen with Seattle maybe they do shock us again and and they go on a nice run in that first year but the bar was set way too high for for the Vegas Golden Knights um I when I look at Chicago's roster and I look at the the options you know you mentioned DeHaan uh you mentioned Dylan Strom as well I think that's probably about as bad as it's going to get in terms of a player that you're going to lose here Uh, I mean if you lose DeHaan I think that's kind of a a difficult blow but it's not something that you won't recover from and same with Dylan Strom I mean Matt's saying that he's going to drive him over to Seattle so I I don't think (laughs) I don't think people are going to be too upset about that one but when I look at them and I uh, compare them to some maybe some other teams that are for sure are going to lose a you know a top four defenseman or maybe right. a top six forward I think Chicago's in, in a pretty good, a good spot, spot heading to the expansion yeah. draft definitely okay moving on to the NHL uh, obviously the big elephant in the room is what's been going on in New York the r- rumble in the jungle and Washington <laughs> okay it's obviously it started off with you know Wilson and and him going berserk and throwing a pattern around like a rag doll, you know, and a lot it's of my people, boy. yeah, a lot of people <laughs> felt that um, that it was overboard and he should have been fined. And then yesterday, right from the drop of the puck, we got three fights. And then after that, the the Rangers they make a statement about uh, they they feel that George Peros is cannot do a good job mm-hmm. in uh, you know in his role and. They get a two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine today Ooh. from the league. Just, Ooh. just words. So that yeah, was the fine. <laughs> so two, so two questions yeah, here. Yeah. One, what do you think of the whole situation? And number two, how do you think the owners feel about what happened to the Rangers? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to unpack here with what happened this week between the, between these two teams, and obviously more centering around the New York Rangers. Look, I I love physical hockey. I you know I love the odd fight. I'm I'm not afraid to see that. I'm not somebody that wants fighting out of the game, but I don't tune in to the game to to watch fights. I tune in to watch skill. I tune in to watch hockey. If two grown men want to drop the gloves and both combatants are willing, I'm fine with that. I have no problem with that. These are grown adults, and they can make their own decisions. My only problem is when someone goes after someone and they don't want any part of it and that's what we saw Tom Wilson do a few nights ago uh, to Pavel Buchnevich I mean he's vulnerable he's on the ground he gives them the the rabbit punch you don't need to be going after a skill player like that if you're a guy like Tom Wilson and then Panarin comes in and I you know good for Panarin coming in and defending a teammate like that and he knows full well whose back he's jumping on it's Tom Wilson he knows there's going to be a reaction from Tom Wilson I don't think Panarin's surprised uh, at the reaction from Wilson and (laughs) uh, you know he grabs his hair it was it was an extremely dirty play by, by Tom Wilson there's really no doubt about it and when I watched it uh, and I had it on live at a few games on it at the same time uh, I was so fearful for Panarin right away because watching it live I thought that his head hit the ice now when you slow it down it looks like he he got really lucky and his head didn't hit his hit the ice and uh, the same thing happened to me actually when I was playing hockey Uh, when I was in high school I picked a fight with a much bigger guy Uh, helmet was off and I got thrown to the ice and my head smacked on the ice and I had a concussion for like two months so I know exactly what what Panarin could what could have happened to Panarin uh, luckily it didn't and I'm glad he's relatively okay I know they're calling it a lower body injury with him I think they're just taking precautions be there's safe no need, sure. yeah. yeah there's no need to play him these last few games of the season so um, I didn't like that I didn't like that from Tom Wilson I thought that was kind of cowardly to go after star players like that um, and the but I did think that the the uh, statement from the New York Rangers was maybe a little bit too much. I, I didn't think you needed to go public with that and, and the way that they worded it. I, I just thought it was a bit much from the New York Rangers. That's something you can maybe do in private. You could send to the league. You could send to George yeah. Peros and, and player safety. I don't think that needed to be done uh, in public. And they paid a steep fine for it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and then what we saw yeah. in in response between the the Rangers and the Capitals. I, I don't know about you guys and um, what you like when you, you turn on a hockey game. Uh, it's hard not to get fired up watching that. I mean, guys <laughs> oh, dropping no. the miss and, and, and filling up the penalty box. It's the kind of old school hockey that I, I can't, 
I can't help but enjoy just a little bit. You can't help but be entertained by that. Do I need to see it all game? Prob- probably not, but uh, it was pretty entertaining. When you, when you watch a lot of regular season games like I do, and it can kind of drag on, and especially this year with the same teams playing each other yeah. every yeah. single night, yeah. uh, it was nice yeah. to spice it up a little bit and have, have yeah. something to get excited about. So it was a crazy, crazy week, and hopefully the dust is all settled. Uh, but ultimately, I don't agree with what Tom Wilson did. I, I think if he wants to go after players, go after someone who's ready and a willing combatant. I don't think you need to be going after a down player or someone like Artemi Panarin. The, the instant that he turns around and he sees it's Panarin, I think that the, if you His want to talk about up. a... Yeah, but I think yeah. if you want to talk about a code in hockey, and you know people throw that word around all the time, when you see it's Panarin, I think you need to almost push away and say, hey, buddy, like... Uh, I get you're sticking up for your teammate. I'm not going to go after you. I think a lot of the old school players would have done that. You know, you yeah. you turn around and you see Gretzky grabbing you or something. You're not going to to throw him onto the <laughs> yeah. ground. So, yeah. You're uh, probably going to laugh. Well, well, yeah, because, exactly. Like, well, yeah. hey, <laughs> McSorley would probably be coming for you off of the exactly. bench. You know, well, the Rangers, <laughs> and the Rangers don't have that. And I do think that no, I know a lot they of got rid of the guy. Are, and the yeah. and older players are bringing that up, but I and some people might call them dinosaurs for the fact that they think that you know you need to have these tough guys. But I do I think you need to have at least some sort of toughness. Like it doesn't have to be a guy that goes out there and plays three minutes and just punches people in the face. But I, I think you got to have somebody with a little bit of grit. You got to have some kind of identity yeah. like that, or teams are just going to push you around. And when I look at the Caps, they're a really tough team. They're they're a team full of of guys like Wilson who are kind of bullies, right? And the Rangers mm-hmm. just aren't yeah. built that way. And I, I think we kind of saw that take place uh, a few nights ago. You know, do it's you crazy. think they're? Do you think they're regretting getting rid of uh, Brandon Lemieux to yes. uh, L.A.? I think he would have yes. that next game. He would have been the man out there just starting all the trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, and that's the type of guy too that he can play. I mean, he's, yeah, he's not just a, exactly. Yeah, he can go play on your fourth line, even your third line. You could even bump him up in the lineup if you want to, and it's not like a waste of a roster spot. He can give you a good, you know, 10, 11 minutes. He might even be able to provide some offense, and he does have that that grit. So I think it's something that you need on your team, you know, not even for a situation like this with Panarin, but if you want to go on a deep playoff run, I think you're going to need that, especially in that division, uh, which will be the Metropolitan Division when we get back to normal next year. Right. There's some pretty yeah. tough physical teams in there, and, and Washington's the first one that comes to mind. You're probably going to have to go through the Caps and you need some kind of physicality. So that that is something I, I think the Rangers probably need to address. It's pretty incredible because I'm not a Tom Wilson fan by any means, but he is probably like the prototypical, well, I would say like maybe the millennial goon that, uh, <laughs> if, you know, to describe him because he is skilled, he has speed, he can pass, he could shoot, but... He also hits and he fights. And there's a lot of guys who aren't doing that uh, these days. You know, a lot of teams are, they're building their teams off of speed and skill. And even the, even fourth line guys, a lot of them are, are, are really talented players, you know. You know, going forward, you know, like who, like who can fit into like these type of roles and how many guys do you think you need like that? Well, yeah, no, and I, I love the style of player of Tom Wilson. Like, I know I just said I didn't like what he did a few nights ago. Sure. I would take him on my team any day, and, and he's a player I really enjoy watching because he does have that offensive upside, and you can play him with Ovechkin, and you can put him on the power play, and he, he can kind of just do a bit of anything. Right. I just get annoyed when he crosses that line from physical to dirty and, and you yeah. know, goes after star players like that. I just think that that's something that you don't need to do, and there is kind of that code in the NHL, like, hey, you stick to your own weight class. You don't have to go after the the skill guys so that's what bothers me about him but the the, the play the player himself is is awesome i really love watching him. you can make a case he he might uh be on team canada when team canada plays uh for the olympics there's a lot of people making that case now uh for a guy like tom wilson to be there i don't know if i necessarily would put him on my roster <laughs> no. but uh, the fact he's no. even in the conversation i think says a lot about his talent and about the the skill level that he does have so I think you'd, I, there there really isn't too many comparisons for him. He's kind of such a unique player right now. So I don't think that right. teams can just go out there and find a Tom Wilson. Uh, so they're rare. They're, it's kind of a diamond in the rough type scenario where there might only be three or four of these guys available. So I don't think you can necessarily yeah. load your roster with them. But if you find one, I think you want to hang on to it because he, he makes the, the cap successful whether you love him or hate him. I think Shaw was like kind of like him, Andrew Shaw, oh. when he for first started. Yeah. I, I think he Shaw he kind of made like stupid penalties and it just drove you nuts but he had talent and he had the best no goal call of all time. <laughs> the head going off the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. 
that yeah. that that's one of my favorite plays ever. Like it's it's <laughs> yeah. the fact that that goal didn't count. I know in the rule book oh, it's man. not. We need to make that count. I mean that should be yeah, like that two goals. Awesome. That's insane. The, yeah, the know, goal, that, that was, <laughs> that was <laughs> the perfect. Goal. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, I have to ask, hopefully my two uh, cohorts here will entertain me. So I've always been, since I was a kid, Jake, I've been like a closet Maple Leafs fan. That's like been my other team. Um, I've never been to Toronto. Uh, yeah, yeah. Matt knows since second grade or third grade, I've been making him trade me all his Maple Only Leaf Only kid cards. I've ever known in Chicago to wear a Maple, a Maple Leafs, Leafs jersey. jersey. Yeah. And I was like, that's cool, man. Whatever yeah, you got to do. Half the kids yeah. I don't think knew what the Maple Leafs were, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so, okay, my, my question for you is, First of all, how if the standings hold true and you have a first round of Toronto and Montreal, I've never been to Toronto. I'm still trying to convince my wife that we need to take a, a vacation to the Hockey Hall of Fame up there someday. But yeah, first of all, how 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 crazy will the city go if it's a Toronto uh, Montreal first round matchup? And and what do you see them doing? Obviously, Anderson's working his way back. He had a rough night, I think, the other night in his first stint, I think, in the AHL, right, or in yeah. his conditioning stint. Yeah, he's rusty. Yeah. What do you see? I mean, do you see them? This is like the typical Leafs team where they fan out in the playoffs or, you know, someone comes along and, and knocks them out really quickly. Or what do you see with them doing in the playoffs? <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, you got to get yourself to Toronto once it's safe to yes. do so again. And we, we'll meet up. We'll get some good Canadian beer. Oh, that'd be uh, awesome. I've been, I've been to the Hockey Hall of Fame more times than, than I can count. So it's, it's not <laughs> it's in the mall, right? Me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. I was there. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah exactly. no, it's it, it's a fun it's a fun vibe. Actually, it's funny too. When the Raptors won uh, the NBA championship a couple years ago, that's basically where we were partying. The the streets were just flooded with people, yeah. and I remember we were all walking past the Hockey Hall of Fame, and it was a, that was a surreal night. I mean, that was probably the most fun. I've lived in Toronto now for about ten years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ever since I got out of high school, I basically just moved here, and that was probably the most fun night I've ever had. I think if the Leafs won, it would be scary. What would happen to, to, to the <laughs> like it would just be. And we're still in a pandemic right now. I would right. hope by the time that, that, you know, the Stanley Cup playoffs are over and the Leafs would possibly win that things are better. Uh, but I don't think people would really care. I think this, this no. Leafs would just be flooded with people. We might have another hey. outbreak. So yeah. uh, it might, might be best that they don't win this year. But uh, <laughs> I, I think, I mean, at least Habs first round uh, series, which is what it's looking like right now, unless uh, the Habs are able to catch Winnipeg for yeah. that three spot. Right. I think it would just be great for both fan bases. I mean, I grew up in an era uh, or in an area where it's all Leafs fans and it's all Habs fans. And you would think oh. where I grew up, it was mostly Leafs fans, but I grew up in small town Ontario. A lot of people don't like the Leafs in small town really? Ontario. There's wow. kind of like a. Uh, yeah, dislike for the city in a way. Uh, so a lot of people cheer for the Habs. Some people cheer for teams like Chicago or other original six teams. Sure. Uh, so it was where I grew up, at least in the town I grew up, it wasn't mostly Leaf fans. It was kind of 50-50. Okay, and a lot of Habs fans. So big rivalries between a lot of friend groups, and uh, I, I think it would be a lot of fun. I think when you look at the two teams on paper, I mean, talent wise, the Leafs just blow them out of the water. Sure. But oh, anything. For sure. Anything can happen in a series, as you guys know, watching uh, playoffs over the years. Like I've been watching the Leafs and Habs games all season. It feels like they've played a hundred times now, and the Leafs just look like the better team every time. But you kind of get that feeling that game one of the playoffs, mm -hmm. you know, a couple bad things go their way. All of a sudden, the Habs are up one nothing in the series, and the pressure gets cranked up, uh, and things can change very, very quickly come playoff time. So. I, it's it's tough to trust them in the playoffs. It really is because there's been so That's many where years too. where they get bounced. Uh, I do yeah. think that this is the best team they've had uh, maybe in my life, maybe, maybe ever since I was like 12, 13 years old. So it's been mm -hmm. a while since they've had a team this talented uh, with a great path, I think, to, to go to at least the third round through that Canadian division. So they got to be able to take advantage of it. This is, this is certainly an opportunity for them right now, uh, but you do ha get the feeling that uh, things aren't going to go their way come playoff time because that's what usually happens here it's always yeah, in the back not, of my head yeah. they're not running into the bruins <laughs> yeah yeah well, that's exactly. the other thing yet yeah. yet that's the possibly other thing. no i i'm right there with you like i i still remember and matt can attest to this i was playing like nhl 94 on sega genesis and it was like mm. all right i got you know felix the cat and doug gilmore and wendell clark <laughs> and, and yeah you yeah. know and especially for all those years in the the early 2000s when the hawks were absolute garbage it was like it was always nice to have this other team to cheer for so well, that's exciting. I mean, you know, well, if the Hawks aren't going to make it, I hope they can pull through. We'll see. It, but it's it's funny that you bring that up, though, because you know, as someone that grew up going to Leaf games and, and grew up in the, in this area, my dad's like the biggest Leafs fan ever. Like, mm -hmm. just a crazy diehard Leafs fan. And um, you know, you sort of grow up cheering for the team and, and and rooting for them, whatever. 
but I always had a, a Western Conference team, and it was the mm-hmm. Chicago Blackhawks. There you I, go. I, so it's kind of funny that it, that it works <laughs> out that way. I just always love the logo. Like, it's my yeah. favorite logo in professional sports. For great sure. jersey. Awesome. So I was always attracted yeah. to it as a kid. Even when they didn't have great teams growing up, I still just, like, loved to see the jersey. Um, mm-hmm. And then as they actually became good, they got players like Kane and Taves on the team. I thought, man, this is a team I can really get behind. So that 2010 run, I, I, I was probably the biggest Blackhawks fan in our area, just really rooting them on, wanting to see them get it done. Uh, yeah, family friend of mine is Dave Boland as well. So mm-hmm. was really happy for him when awesome. when he got the cup. So and scored that huge goal. So it's, oh uh, my I've been rooting, I've been rooting yeah. for your Blackhawks uh, secretly for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite cup winning year? Was it 2010? Yeah, I would say 2010, just because that was the first one, and you know yeah. we had the we had that Patrick Kane goal that nobody really saw. Did you guys see it go in? Like, what, what was the celebration for you guys? Not I, off the bat, no. Up. No, I, I was at my father in law's. We all like. We were like, what's going on? What's going on? We we're like, we'll, we'll sit back down. We'll sit back down. And then Kane starts going crazy. You knew so it. So we're like, okay, let's hug. You know, and then they, <laughs> then they finally said it was in and we we flipped out. It was yeah. a, it was amazing. I jumped up. I said, I I was in a room full of non-hockey fans. <laughs> and uh, I, I and I, I jumped too. up I jumped up and I, I said they won. They're like, what? I'm like, they won. They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, you didn't see it? That was clear as day. It <laughs> yes. went right through the freaking goalie, man. Five hole on Leighton. I, I, yeah. Michael Leighton. I went to the yeah. uh I went to the refrigerator, I popped open the beer and I fucking slammed it right back, and then I was in tears. <laughs> I couldn't man. freaking believe it, man. And then what, and then they showed it go through in the in the replay. What was the celebration like like there? Like, did you guys just oh. flood the streets? What was the what was that night like? I can't remember what day of the week it was, but you know what? There was a storm because my parents lost power and oh I, really they were texting wait, 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 wait. What's going I, I think what's no, going no 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 that was 2015 i think 2010 oh no 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 no, 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 no. Was it was the 2013 no it was 2010 so no it parents. wasn't it wasn't 2010 to count, to count there, guys. it was it was <laughs> i know right it was not 2010 I, well my I, parents didn't have power <laughs> it must have been it must have been the air conditioners going off too long because i was getting texts from my dad what's going on what's going on he lost his mind against philadelphia so, yes uh, I just yeah. I I don't, I don't know, have in, any power issues. I you know obviously in Toronto in 2013 I did I'm sorry yeah but I mean obviously Jake like in Toronto it's it's always it's hockey crazy all the time right so like yeah. I know for us like you know Matt and I and and you know in, when I was in college we would go to the United Center you could get 300 level seats for eight dollars if you showed a college with ID a, with an ID with yep. an ID <laughs> there was no one there they would turn you know lights off in sections that there were no fans in and then over the course of two years all of a sudden this bandwagon of fans just jumped on board oh, and i will yeah. admit yeah. i think all of us at one point were very um angry you know we were angry that's like hey you you guys don't understand like yeah, yeah. they were good in the 90s yeah. but we've been suffering through this team for yeah. decades and now now <laughs> Take you're the just tags off the ride. your jerseys yeah, yeah. yeah. you know yeah. name, name yeah. somebody besides taves and kane or you know something like that but yeah. um it, yeah I, I just remember that first 2010 um my wife girlfriend at the time we decided all right we're gonna go down to the the parade the rally downtown and we got to the the train station at uh midway airport in the line it was so far back you, you couldn't get in the train station it was and that was at like seven in the morning so that it was it was crazy how much the city loved this t- that team and and I'm hoping as they have these growing pains right now and they start to turn it around I'm hoping a lot of those people who they've come on board I hope they don't jump off at the first sign of trouble but we'll see you know yeah well it's funny that you mentioned that because I talked about the fact that Raptors won a couple years yeah. ago and I'm a huge Raptors fan like they're maybe not as popular or they're definitely not as popular as the the Maple Leafs or any sure. or even the the Blue Jays who had a, a couple of really good runs here as well uh, but they were a team that I cheered for ever since they came into the league in in the mid 90s and they were just terrible I mean they would never even sniff the playoffs for years so so many years of pain and I thought are they even gonna ever make the playoffs? Playoffs, and then when they went on the run and and they won it all, uh, the bandwagon just filled up. I mean, there was people, and I, I felt the same way. I thought, hey, I've been through all these all this pain. You guys yeah, are just exactly. jumping on at the yeah. at the best time, but yeah. ultimately it was just fun to celebrate with everybody. Totally, and, and it totally. didn't it didn't really yeah. matter if you were the biggest Raptors fan or or you just were jumping on at at that time. So uh, it's just it's a special feeling though. I mean, that was the first time I've ever experienced it as a fan yeah. uh, of a team, and so for you guys to to, to go through that, I know exactly what what you mean and. Uh, it, it was pretty it was pretty cool there was a time the red wings fans would outnumber us the hawks like, fans yeah and i'm not kidding the red wings scored a goal the goal horn went off and i'm like what that was what, that what, an what, what, Chicago yeah. here boys i could not believe it <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, there was some. There was more fights in the stands when the Red Wings and Hawks would play. Even when the Hawks were bad, it was it. It got a little dicey at times. Oh, but, it uh, did. Yeah. 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 I remember my. Uh, I think I was thirteen. My uncle took me to a game, and I was and I was upset. I'm like, hey man, you know, I've been wanting to go to a game for so long. You know, he goes, this isn't the place for kids. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and and sure enough, man. Uh, you know, we're up up in the upper deck. We're watching a game. The first period, there's this group next to us. You know, this chick, these two chicks, and these two dudes. And then um, every, everybody's drinking. And then by the third period, you know, like four people got into a fight, the chicks included. I was like, holy <laughs> smoke. I mean, I've never seen anything like this. You know, it was just a, just a heck of an experience, you know, and, and watching the Hawks, you know, go from, you know, losing Jeremy Roenick and Ed Balfour and and uh and Chelios to no, like no no home games on TV for the longest time and I mean, in no I home cried games when on Balfour TV was traded Tony I'm not even gone I freaking cried to watching them win the cup you know it was just it was just absolutely incredible have you ever made it to a uh, Stanley Cup game you know just just period no I haven't actually which is un- unfortunate because it would be it would be quite the experience but there hasn't been a Stanley Cup game here <laughs> in, in my lifetime so I've been to a ton of playoff games though a ton of Leafs playoff games just never a, a Stanley Cup final game a lot of the guys from the station have been able to make the trip I for years was usually the one stuck back at the at the studio doing the night shows and stuff like that mm-hmm. so some of my best memories actually of Cup finals are being at the studio doing those night shows and uh, taking calls from fans like Chicago fans mm-hmm. going nuts after a win or Kings fans when they had their run and, and yep. things like yeah. that. So, uh, the, you know, those are great. Those are great memories for me because you could really hear the passion of the fans and, and people having a good time. And even though I wasn't out there, I you kind of get that energy right. uh, and you want to put on a good show. So uh, I do kind of miss doing those, those night shows. You know, you want off the night shift and then once you're off of it, you think, hey, that was kind of fun. You know, I, I liked that. Uh, yeah. I like doing those night shows. Yeah, I would Ice imagine. Camps. You definitely yeah. get to see yeah. everything. Yeah. You know, well, cool guys. Do you guys have anything more for Jake? I got one more Leafs question, actually. Yeah. I'm stealing it from Just maybe. <laughs> who, who do you think is better, Marner or Matthews? Mm. Who would you take? Oh, we've had this discussion before. We, yeah. we have, and it, yeah. It, are you guys split hard. on this? Or is it, is this, is this I is think we're Marner guys. guys. Yeah, we're, I, I think, think... We're, we're team Marner for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna go Matthews here. I'll be uh, I'll take the other side. Obviously, they're both really yeah. talented players, and they do different things very very well. But ultimately, scoring goals is the the biggest thing you need to do when when sure. you play hockey. Right. I mean, and it's not easy to do. I mean, we we saw Ovechkin as maybe the greatest goal scorer of this era, or definitely the greatest goal scorer of this era, maybe the greatest goal scorer of all time. Uh, have that sort of consistency of scoring 50 goals every single year, and it's just so difficult to do. You know, you see players flash and have a 30 goal season or a 40 goal season but to be able to do it every year is just so so difficult and Austin Matthews to me looks like somebody that can do it like Alex Ovechkin did and be a 50 goal scorer every single season I I really Mm -hmm. do believe he has that sort of goal scoring ability so I got to go with Matthews just because I think that at any 82 game season he can go out there and score 50 if you prorate this season he's over 60 so uh, it's crazy right. the goal scoring ability, yeah. but that's not not to take anything away from from Mitch Marner, who's a fantastic player with with great vision. But I'm going to go with uh, Austin Matthews here. So the Americans are going with, with the Canadian, Canadian. kid, yeah, and the Canadians <laughs> go. going with the American kid from <laughs> well, Arizona. <laughs> well, speaking speaking of uh, Americans and Canadians, though, I I'm not <laughs> sure if the NHL is going to be going to the Olympics or not. I really hope that they do. I yeah. I love Olympic hockey, uh, yeah. but the American team could be really really fun. Yeah. I, I mean, the Canadian teams are all. all Always loaded, and you're going to have McDavid and uh, McKinnon and guys like that. I mean, up and down the Canadian roster could just be crazy. Scary. I'd be yeah. really excited to watch that American team with guys like Eichel and, and Matthews on there. Uh, not to yeah. mention some of the kids on the back end as well. So I hope they go. I, I hope they go. Maybe we can come back on and talk, and, talk some. And our guys don't get hurt. I'd like yeah. to see. I'd <laughs> like to see uh, Tom Wilson make the Canadian team and both Kachuk brothers uh, with you, you know practically seething on on yeah. their bench waiting awesome. to get after them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think Brady might be the better Kachuk. Yeah, I man. Yes. Throw that out there. I mean, they're yes. both good, yeah. but yeah. I I really like Brady. I mean, he's he's, he's exciting to watch. He is. Yeah. yeah. That's all they got in Ottawa. It seems I was gonna like say he makes he makes positive. the Senators something something sometimes exciting to watch yeah. seeing him out there. Um, Jake, one last question, at least for me, yeah. before I know we got to let you go. But do you have any fun. any major playoff predictions? Anything in particular series that you're looking forward to? Who do you think is going to come out of the East and the West in general? Anything in, uh, you just like to elaborate about the playoffs? 
Yeah, yeah. No, I'm really excited for the playoffs because, like I said, the the regular season, especially watching the same teams every single night, and I feel like this year we sort of knew who the good teams were and who the bad teams were very quickly, so I've been kind of waiting for the playoffs now for a while. The Canes mm-hmm. were my cup pick at the start of the year, so I'm just going to stick wow. with them. They've they've done nothing to show me that I need to jump off of them. If anything, they've right. proven to me that the one question mark I had about the Canes was their goaltending Goal situation, yeah. and they've they've answered that. I mean, now they have too many goaltenders. <laughs> yeah. you know, they've they've yeah. got Mirazic, right. they've got Nedeljkovic, they've got Reimer. So I really think the Canes are set up for success uh, going into the playoffs this year. So I'm going to stick with them. I'm really excited for the possibility of a Tampa Bay-Florida matchup to kind of yeah. get that state of Florida Battle rivalry Florida. going. Yeah. And, and I, I think the entire East, uh, you know, all four of those teams, however you match them up, you know, Caps, Pens, Isles, Bruins, those are going to be uh, really, really good matchups. And I actually yeah. think the Isles could be the sneaky team that maybe some people are forgetting about in that mix. I feel like they're built for playoff success, sure. built to match up great, against great teams coach. come playoff time. Yeah. Uh, and here in Canada, I mean, just to see the Canadian matchups, uh, the TV ratings are going to be insane here oh, yeah. for you know a possible Toronto-Montreal first round, Edmonton-Winnipeg in the first round, and then the possibility of Edmonton-Toronto in the second round to have McDavid versus Matthews. I mean, yeah. uh, it's going to get a lot of eyeballs here in Canada. Canada, and I'm, I'm excited for it. I, I think it's going to be fun. Uh, and, you know, Canadian teams in general haven't had a ton of success uh, in the playoffs mm-hmm. winning Stanley Cups. So the fact that you're going to get one of them at least into the third round, I think will be good for hockey here. And, oh, yeah. and maybe keep people yeah, invested yeah. a little bit longer. For sure. I hope awesome. it's Toronto. I just, I hope. Fingers crossed. Fingers yeah. crossed. Dude, if 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 McDavid has anything to say about it, man, Ooh. I mean, I mean, yeah. this could be this could be his year, you know? You never I think know. Edmonton's issues are goaltending, though. It is. I, I, I mean, even the Hawks beat them last year, and they were definitely the better team. <laughs> well, the Hawks, the Hawks. If thinking back, the Hawks looked like a more complete team than Edmonton. It seemed like it was Edmonton and Leon Drysdale versus you know an entire other team. Connor, yeah. You know, yeah. And uh, and and they they just couldn't put it together. Yeah, the, the, the Oilers are playing as we speak. I'm just going to assume McDavid has another like two or three points. <laughs> two or three right points. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if he played 82 games? Where do you think he would be right now? Like 160 points? Yes. Actually, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny you mentioned that. I checked today, and they said if you prorated this season Incredible. as of right now, Patrick Kane would be at the if there's a top 10 at the bottom of the list with 109 points. Wow. Wow. That's insane. So scoring's up. Yeah, yeah, remember when Jamie Ben won the scoring title a few like, years ago with like eighty points? Yeah, like, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Times have oh, changed. Man, that's funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, in closing, Jake, well, we'd really like yeah. to extend to you, man, how how uh, grateful we are for you coming yes. on and talking Thank hockey you. with you. Uh, you, you didn't sir. disappoint, man, at all. Uh, it, it was really a great time. Uh, talking hockey is pretty much the reason why we we did this, and in Chicago. Obviously, from the cup wins, there's a lot of Hawks fans that that come out and you go to talk hockey with people and they have no idea what you're talking about, you know, and that's one thing that we we love to do, man, is talk hockey, man. It's been it's been a great time with you. We'd love to have you back on sometime, you know, maybe after the playoffs are over and and see how things kind of pan out. We could, uh, you know, revisit what happened with Matthews. Did (laughs) did McDavid uh, fly off? Voice in the cup. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and you could see uh, you could see Justin cry after Toronto wins. Yes, I'll uh, <laughs> I'll record myself. That can be like uh, some like high level uh, uh, subscriber stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it was a it was a blast talking hockey with you guys. You guys seem like like really great people. So anytime, shoot me a note. I'm happy to come back on and uh, uh, and yeah, enjoy enjoy the playoffs. Go Leafs for Justin and uh, whatever. <laughs> Matt, Michael. I don't know which which, uh, which team you guys are going to be rooting for, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know yet. I, I like Vegas. I was in Minnesota uh, two days ago, and I was watching them. Just they break out the puck in like two seconds, and seems yeah. like they just seem so like stacked. But who knows if they run into St. Louis, it could change, you know, because they're battle tested. So we will see. I'm a hawk. I'm I'm a, I'm such a big Hawks fan, man. I see red any team that they play. They've played every team so when i see everybody else playing with each other i want everybody to lose you know? <laughs> He's but, a homer. But, yeah but i don't have any uh, i don't have any hate against toronto i don't have any hate against toronto uh but uh it's going to be interesting man i'm going i'm probably going to watch some a lot of playoff hockey this year because with everything that's going on i think it's going to be a really interesting year to see how this plays out i was i really love the scheduling of that they had this year of having you play a team twice 
you kind of, you know, you spend four days there, you know, you're rested up, you, you get guys, um, you know, playing at their best and, and guys are, are sick of playing each other, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and it's going to be a really interesting come playoff time. So, uh, so it's going to, I think it's going to be great, man. Awesome. But that's all that we've got for you tonight, guys. Uh, it's good. We, uh, this is a great show. I had a really great time with it. Jake, thanks for coming on and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. This is a Tomahawk and we're out. <laughs>